In the second section, we'll be exploring the ASP.NET Core built-in features. You'll see how to work with the dependency injection, how to work with application settings, and how to make use of features such as logging or filters. In this video, we'll talk about the dependency injection. You will see how to work with a default built-in IOC container and how to replace it with something more powerful. Let's say an out of hoc library. Okay, so here I have a very simple application. It's an API, I call this Accountant API, and basically it allows you to manage the user accounts. As you can see, we can get the user account by name or, or browse the list of the users. So let's see in action. I have the API here. I can navigate to the slash users endpoint where I can see the usernames list and I can go to the user account details. So let's get back to our code and put the problem here. Of course, we have an issue because we are creating a new instance of the iUser repository interface on our own. And well, that's definitely not a good practice. For example, we cannot easily test such controller. So what we can do? Well, we can try to actually inject our interface here via constructor. So let's try to do it this way. And just assign our private variable to the one passed via constructor. And let's try to run the application now. I'll execute .NET run. The application started. So let's try to refresh the page. And well, we have an issue. So what happened? We can see there is an error. And it says that it's unable to resolve the service. Which means that the framework doesn't know how to actually inject this interface. But we can easily fix this because we can use a built-in IOC container which is available in the ASP.NET Core framework. So let's go to our startup class. And here in this configure services section, we can do things like this. Services, add. And we can choose add scoped or add singleton or add transient. The transient will create a new instance object for every request, for every injection. The add scoped will create a new instance, but only per new HTTP request. Add, and add singleton will actually create a single, single life, single instance of the object for the whole application lifecycle. So let's make this repository maybe scoped one. So we can say add scoped and then provide our i user repository interface and then actual implementation, which is a user repository. Like this. We just need to adjust the usings here. And our user repository is here. There is an interface and there is the actual implementation. Very simple and very straightforward. So let's try to run the application one more time. And let's refresh our page. So it's working properly, which means that our built-in IOC container works just fine. However, there are scenarios where you would like to use something more powerful, because as you can see, there are only these three choices, at scoped, at singleton, or at transient. So let's say we would like to use the artifact, which is a very powerful and one of the most popular IOC containers here, something like structure map or unity or inject, you can also use this, but I would like to show you how to use artifact. So here we have this documentation for integration with ASP.NET Core for the Autofact library. So let's start with uh, adding the packages. At first, I will say .NET add package Autofact. It will install the package. And now we want to install this one, this extension for the ASP.NET Core. So I just copy it. And once again, .NET add package. Now we can call the restore, which will restore our packages. All right, and now we can go to the actual implementation of Autofac into our code. So let's get rid of this one. And let's start with the following. At first, we need to define the container. So I container, which comes from the Autofac library container, let's say get and private setter. We'll just need to add using to the Autofac. And now we can go to the configure services. At first, we want to return this void type to be actually of type I service provider which is under the using system namespace. And now let's implement the Autofac here. So we'll create a new builder object and the builder is actually responsible for creating our container. So new container builder, 
then we can actually register our types. So let's say build register type. And we want to register our user repository as I user repository. Now we want to populate. And populate comes from this another extensions packet. And we need to actually invoke this method in order to populate this ASP.NET Core services into our out of a container. So let's just add the using here. Set our application container to be of type container equals builder build, which will build our new container. And finally, we can return our new out of fact service provider passing our container here. And before we run our application, let's go into this configure. And here we can inject this iApplication lifetime interface which actually allows us to control what happens when application starts or stops. So here we can say app lifetime, and I want to say when application stops, we want to register this container will be properly disposed, like this. And let's try to run our application now. So .NET run once again, and let's see if this works properly. And yeah. It works just fine. So as you can see, it's very, very easy to actually replace the built-in IOC container, build into this framework with another one, like a Autofact, which actually is much more powerful. As you can see, there are many, many options that let you register your interfaces and their implementations in a multiple different ways.